projects under the mentorship of Dr. Monica Johnson in the Department of Sociology. The title of my project is First Generation Mexican American College Students, Parental Involvement in College Go. I first would like to start out by introducing you to my study. My research investigates the involvement of Mexican parents in their child's college preparation and attendance. The research question that I want to answer is what experiences with parents do first year Mexican American college students who are of first generation, low income, and migrant or seasonal farm worker background perceive more important factors in shaping their educational success. And in order to give context to my study, I want to define a few definitions. When I refer to Mexican, I mean an individual who's born in Mexico. When I refer to Mexican American, it's an individual who was born in the United States but is of Mexican descent. And in my study, I will use Mexican American and Chicanos interchangeably. The way I measure in success is a student who graduates, who graduated from high school and is attending college. In order to help us understand how I developed my question, I want to review the literature. I first looked at the social context of Mexicans and Mexican Americans in the United States. And what I found is this group has been, historically has been oppressed culturally, linguistically, and socially, which in turn influences their social economic status and their education. This group is one of the ethnic groups with the lowest educational attainment when compared to other racial ethnic groups. It's one of them. And then within the Latino population, this group is one of the largest ethnic minority within the Latino population, representing about 64%. In order to elaborate on the points that I just mentioned, I want to share a study done, conducted by Hoover and other scholars that show this lack of education within first the Latino group and then they further narrow it down to break down the Latino group. So in this case, they compare Latinos, Native, Native Americans, African Americans, whites, and Asian Americans. And so here we see that they start out with 100 females and 100 males entering elementary school for all, right? And so then 54 females and 51 males out of the 100 students graduate from high school. And if we compare this number across, we see that it's a very low number. And it's starting at such an early age in their educational career. So then Hoover and the other scholars further, further narrow the, the Latino population by national origin. That are Chicano, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Dominican, and Salvadorian. And here in this, in this figure, we see that Salvadorians and Chicanos tend to have a, the least percentage of educational attainment when compared to the other groups. But one thing that we do have to take into consideration is the population, the percentage of the Chicano groups within the Latino group. So that's, we need to take that into account and see that those numbers are very low for the, in terms of the population within that group. And so I wanted to show you guys this today so we can understand the reasons why I want to focus my attention towards towards the Chicano population. So aside from the social context of Mexicans and Mexican Americans in the United States, I looked at parental involvement because scholars recognize that parental involvement is one of the factors that contributes to a student's success. It's one of an important factor. And they mentioned that students whose, whose parents are involved in their education tend to achieve higher success. And the way they conceptualize a parent's involvement is that of an, the parent is involved in the child's education in order to promote success. And they're actively involved. And to, for example, I want to share models with you guys so that way we can understand what scholars have conceptualized parental involvement to be. So Tomlinson, 1991, maintains that parental involvement takes one of four forms. That of the exchange of information. So the parent and the school are exchanging information about the child. Two, personal in involvement in the educational matters. So the parent is personally involved in their child's education. 
For example, they're helping their children with their homework. Three, informal involvement in administrative matters and or formal involvement in school governing. So informal out of, outside of the school and informal inside of the school. For example, school governing, the parent is, is attending meetings. That way they are helping their child, they're, they're helping by place putting input, right, of their child's success. Also, Epstein elaborates on the Thomason matter, the parental involvement model. She mentions six types of homeschool relationships. That of good parenting. So the parent at an early age is showing their child the rules, um, good from bad, right? That way they can, the students can implement this in schools. Also, there's communication. So the parents are communicating with the schools and the, the schools are communicating with the parents. So we see this, this type of communication. Also, volunteering. So we see parents volunteering at the school, uh, making sure that their child, the children are doing good. And also by, for an example would be by volunteering at, in an organization for their students. There's also this learning environment at the home. So the parent's making sure that the child has a learning environment within their own home. Make, they're making decisions and they're collaborating with the community in order to make, in order for the, their child to have resources that will benefit them in their education. So these models stress the important role that the parent plays in the child's educational success.
And based on what the students mentioned in their interviews, their parents did not receive a formal education in the United States, nor did they work, or, or, and they worked in the fields. The way I connected with and found my sample was through the CAMP program, the College Assistant Migrant Program. I connected with the director of the CAMP program, Jose Estrada, and he helped me by emailing, forwarding my email to the students. And it was the student's job to email me back if they wanted to participate. The general eligibility for a student to be in the CAMP program is a student has to be a US citizen, a US permanent resident, they have to receive financial aid, and they have to be a freshman standing. They also either have to particip have participated in a migrant educational program or have worked 75 days in the past 24 months in seasonal work, such as field work, factory, poultry, dairy. And for WSU in particular, the program uses a qualifying point system, which allows the program to select those students with the most need. And that's when this uh, low income, first generation, semi-structured and open-ended questions. I asked students questions about their background, their parents' involvement, non-parental sources that also were involved in their education, as well as their motivations to continue their education. And all of this was asked, I asked them to reflect on their K-12 experience and their college-going process. transcribing, I analyzed the, the interviews for common themes, and I found three main findings as of now. My finding number one affirms the finding of past literature that says that there are barriers that, as reasons why parents are less involved in their, child, in their child's education. Six out of the 17 students mentioned their parents' attempt to help them with homework. And what the parents did help was with basic math and Spanish. And so here we see the barriers. We see that the language barrier and the educational barrier. 11 out of 17 mentioned their parents would attend parent-teacher conference. But these students mentioned that the parents had difficulty communicating with the, parent, with the teachers because of the language barrier. So I'm not going to elaborate more on this point because research already identifies it. What I do want to focus on is what students identify as their parents, as their parents uh, to be involved, the ways that they, they mention their parents to be involved. And the first one is, this, is through this fieldwork exposure. Parents were showing, they're telling their, their, their children that they had to go and get an education through this fieldwork exposure, and it was very deliberate because they had conversations about it, the parents had conversations with their children, and they also either exposed expose the children by taking them to work with them, or both. And I will use quotes from my, my participants to illustrate these points. To be, 11 out of 17 students mentioned their parents to be a supportive structure. And I will also use quotes to illustrate this point. My finding number three was that non-parental sources, such as an educational program, or an individual help the students in the way literature defined. So for example, the fieldwork influence, how these students share how this fieldwork influenced them. Isabel mentions, it was really rough. Like even the first year, fifth grade in the summer, it was the first day I only worked, I don't know, we had to be there at 4 a.m. and my mom would wake me up at 3 a.m. I just needed half an hour to get ready but she would wake me up an hour before. It was rough. At moments, I would say, I have to go to college. Mateo mentions, it was hard. I hated it during the summer. I would go pick cherries with my dad, and I hated it because you wake up early, and it's cold in the morning, and by midday, it's blazing hot. It's 90 degrees. Also, a student who 
was influenced, but didn't work, is Jose. He mentions, no, I never went. My dad always said he is trying to better our lives, so he said it's best for us not to go. Instead, just look out there and watch people work. And would ask, do you want to be doing this for the rest of your life, or do you want to be doing something better? So we begin to see this dialogue between the parent and, and the student in order to get the, the student to go and get an education. Another example of this fieldwork dialogue is Raquel. I think it was probably one of the biggest motivations, to, one of my biggest motivations to want to continue my education because it's something that I never think about, that my parents do this every day and they're going to do this for the rest of their lives because they have no education and they would always tell me, you want to end up like this, then don't go to school. Also, Cristiano mentioned, my dad would say, I'm going to introduce you to the field so you know that if this is what you want. Otherwise, you have to work hard and make something out of yourself. Definitely, it was a huge shocker and perhaps my biggest motivator to succeed and get an education. Elias, my parents would say, well, you don't want to be stuck working, stuck where we are. I mean, a lot of them say that. Oh yeah, you don't want to be stuck working here, so go get an education. And that is how my parents are. Also, students identify their parents to be a supportive structure, and so I want to illustrate that with this quote. Esperanza mentions, she would notice when I was stressing, because I had a job in high school, and I was involved in the dance team, it was stressful to go to school from 6 a.m. to 3-ish and then go to dance practice, and then from dance practice to work. And she could tell that I was stressed. So she would try to de-stress me, and she would say, this is what you are working towards. So she was a lot of emotional support. We also see Raquel identifying her parents as a supportive structure. But by knowing that, we, that they are supporting, knowing that they are really caring, and that they are really interested in knowing what I'm going through, they always tell me, You've already made it this far. It's hard, but it's only going to, it's only a few years. It's going to be worth it in the end. It's their support morally, knowing they're going to be there in the end. So those are the ways students identify their parents to be involved. And now the third finding is these non-parental sources that provided the students this involvement that literature describes, right, based on those models. So there are educational programs such as GIRA, Upward Bound, Educational Talent Search, Connects, AVID, and College Success Foundation. There are also individuals such as a sibling, a mentor, a counselor, a teacher, or one of the advisors from the programs. And I will be using a quote to illustrate, illustrate how the program helped these students. Amelia mentions, Upward Bound, I signed up for it my sophomore year, and they were the people that talked to my dad to let me go to the universities. They would go to my house and talk to him to let me go, telling him what I can get out of going to college, so they helped me out a lot. They helped me write my paper, my papers, and I think because of them I got scholarships. They took me to colleges, we had to read books, had discussions, had to write personal statements, got us ready and paid for our SATs and ACTs. They had practice exams, and they also had summer programs and internships. And Rosa shares with us how an individual who was her counselor helped her. He did a lot for us. He would help us out with getting our classes together. If we knew we wanted to do a specific thing in college, he would help us take the right classes to get us ready. Like he helped me find my anatomy course, my sports medicine course in high school. He watched over our grades and made sure we were doing good. When we got into our junior and senior year, he helped us find scholarships. And then I asked the students to compare the, the both of the supports, and Esperanza illustrates, for my mom, support, it was more emotionally based. She wanted to make sure that I wasn't stressing, that I was eating, that I was healthy, doing this and that, Whereas my sisters, their support was educationally wise, and they told me their experiences. And if they saw me doing something that they did at one point and it didn't work out for them, they would tell me, that isn't going to work. So they would lead me towards the right path. 
So based on my interviews and based on what literature has already described parental involvement to be and my own experiences as a Mexican-American student, I developed my own model. I'm developing my own model. And I'm calling it Mexican Parental Involvement, MPI. And so in this model, I recognize that Mexican parents are involved in their child's education, but in a very different way than what liter literature describes. They are involved. It's just, it looks different. And they have these barriers that prevent them from being involved in the way literature describes. So parents are involved through this field with exposure. They are exposing their children to the field so that way they can push them to go and get an education. And they're also being supportive, emotional 